at Pan now. I was just taking a look at the equipment they have for sale. I was especially wondering if they had an upgraded version of an insane device. They don't. It really seems to just not exist in the game. You have to have a basic insane device. But I did notice something that looks interesting. The Wit and Vinegar Zounderkite. It's the most expensive item they sell. Requires mirrors at 75 plus, which is why I haven't been able to use it until recently. And uh, I think of yeah, there was another mine tool that I've seen somewhere else, but it was much lower tier than this one. But I've never tried any of these mine things that dispatch mines from the back of your ship. So as enemies chase you, I guess they're supposed to hit it. I thought, what the heck, let's try it. It goes into a small weapon slot, so I can have that along with my guided rocket. Success is the child of audacity. A heavy mine which can be deployed from an engine's aft to hobble the enemy. The friend of the tactician, the saboteur, and all who intend to fight another day. So this does 20, 20 damage, this does 25, 25, so it does a bit more damage than the Jubilee. With a bit less heat and the same range. Let's see how it actually works. Oops, wrong one. Ah! Oh shit! Why did that hurt me? I... I don't think I was in the ring, right? Did it blow up? I think so. Maybe you have to be moving, otherwise it gets triggered by your own ship. Is that what's happening? Yeah, wow, I, it hurts outside of the ring that it shows. But uh, yeah, I think you have to be moving. Yeah, takes it a second to activate so it doesn't blow up your own ship. And it doesn't just stay where you left it, it actually shoots out the back, so it actually has backwards pressure or whatever. <laughs> Could be very interesting. Look at them still go. Yeah, they go for so long. At Langley Hall now. His Lordship's Grand Clear. I'll give me some discount bombazine. Thank you. Oh, I have a prospect to finish here. Five things of crockery. Bonus Eleutherian Mystery. Hmm, Bargain Bronzewood. Yeah, well, I'll get that on the way out of five room. Let's go in. report. Hang on my coat and hat. Now, how do I get back there, I guess? Oh, return to the ballroom. Introduce the illuminated archivist. Perhaps he is Langley's lost love. I really, really hope they are. But they very easily could not be the lover question mark lord langley looks up from the piano and gives the illuminated archivist an appraising look i suppose i can fill in much of the story without having to ask him anything he says running his eyes over the archivist's tattoos the two men circle each other like cats claiming territory the archivist's eyes blaze like a well-stoked boiler, though from attraction or dislike, you can't tell. So, the archivist says at last, his voice halting and nervous, I'm told you tried to rebuild London too. Lord Langley begins to laugh. Finally, he recovers himself to tear his gaze from the archivist. His eyes meet yours. Tell me. Are you sure it's him? No. I thought you would know for sure. 
Hmm, they share a goal, the same they shared when they fled London long ago. Uh, I mean, the dancing seems to be the big thing, right? I would expect somebody to, I would expect to get a clue that whoever might be their lover, like they mentioned they like to dance or something. That's what I would expect. No, they share a commonality of purpose, but that proves nothing. Lord Langley gives one last approving look at the archivist's tattoos. I'm sorry, my dear. I do not think you're what I'm looking for. The archivist smiles brightly. No, I know that. I've taken the liberty of wandering here. This is London as it never was. It's not my London. Lord Langley briefly embraces the archivist before turning to you. Please, keep looking. Devils of Carillon claim to be experts in the assess assessment and improvement of the soul. They would describe yours as still, pale, and chilly to the palate. Shit, that's a bad time to get that because I was just about to go to Caduceus after this. I forgot which ones are bad, though. There's like two that prevent you from doing stuff there. I think cold might be one of them. Hmm. All right. It is not them. Well, while I'm here, I might as well... I don't know. Meh. This place is too confusing and gets too laggy to stay here for a long time. I'm just going to leave. Well, I think I won't be able to do stuff at Caduceus, but it's quite close. So let's head up there and actually do a little bit of exploring along the way. Let's go counterclockwise around the rim like this. And hopefully I can try out the new weapon. There are a bunch of enemies along the way to Langley Hall, but I deliberately did not use the mine weapon because I wanted to test it on camera. Ooh, hello. Got a spinster. A couple things out here, too. Gotta move. Can't just do it when I'm still. Damn! That's pretty good. Has a very wide range of effect. Bronze, what? Hermitage. Let's just observe. Gain terror and an Eleutherian mystery. You're deep in the waste of. Whoa! The words. Yep, that's the thing to hit. But when they spin out of existence. Uh, more bronze wood. Just 
floating bits of old buildings. Discontent. Jettison some supplies to appease people. Now that getting rid of nightmares costs so much, I don't want to do that unless absolutely necessary. The lose 50 tear and gain nightmares thing. Do I want to observe the hermit? Because it's going to give me like 10% tear. I guess, but I should probably stop doing it now. Ooh, hello, senior. Oh, what am I doing? Turn the other way. Sheaves of parchment. Vision of the heavens. Oh, I have a bunch of moments of inspiration, by the way, because I had three eggs stored in my bank. Now that I'm in Eleuth Eleutheria, I took them out and sold them to the person at Pan who trades Eleutherian mysteries for the eggs. And then went to December at Winter's Reside. Unexploded shell. Shit. 92% if I disarm it myself. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, let's go up here and get this one. Then I feel like I've pretty thoroughly explored this area. I think I'm going to keep this mine weapon on. It's really nice. The only thing bad about having it equipped instead of the other weapon is that it does leave me with a vulnerability in certain situations. I don't have anything that I can use on an enemy up close that won't damage me. Right, if the mine explodes behind me, that does AoE damage. If the rocket explodes in front of me, that also does AoE damage. So if something's right in my face, I can't do anything to it. But that's probably not that big of a deal. I mean, if something's in my face, I can always get away from it. Or so it's been in the past, with every enemy I've ever encountered. So it should be fine. The thing on the mantelpiece once again. Burn it. Yeah. Burn the damn artifact. You know, you get a lot of old artifacts. Some of them are just cursed. It happens.
winds of elsewhere. Oh, the dark side of Caduceus, right, that reduces tear. 66, down to 56, nice. So can I do the thing? No, yeah, I can't be lightless or cold. Shit. It just completely cuts off all of my options when I have that. What if I follow the beating of the drums? Like, is it going to go back to the tapping on glass? You find yourself back in the same place? Yeah. Okay. Can't do a thing. Just arriving at Paranesi. Explore the gardens. Ooh. Recruit a former prisoner. Has that been an option before? If I contemplate the sculptures, that'll reduce my terror, which honestly I need. Hmm. But then again, like I kind of want to do every option that involves meeting people just in case it's Langley's lost lover. And I'm pretty sure recruiting a former prisoner is just going to add one to my crew, but let's try it. The prison doors have opened. Someone stands freshly released before them. The former prisoner takes a deep breath of freedom. The person they were when they entered Paranesi is gone. The person they are now remains to be discovered. They happily sign up with your crew in the hope of finding out who it is. Let's go with the gallant reformer. Get a port report. Follow the sound of the flute. Oh, I can offer her a book instead of just telling her a story this time. Yeah, so I think that'll increase my chance of success when it comes to learning the rules of Paranesi. 41% right now. Offer her a book. She has a strong preference for recent releases. Anything published since the promised days. She tips her hat, tucking the book carefully under her coat. You know, I served the halved before it was halved, she says. I'm here because I refuse to change alongside my master. Paranesi wasn't built just to punish those like me. It has a threefold purpose. An experiment in the breaking of taboo. An insult to those who follow the fundamental laws. And most importantly, a question. If I can change, why can't you? But I remember the haft before the death of its twin. It hasn't changed half so much as it pretends. The flutist smiles. So I won't either. They worked for the haft. Fascinating. Now 48%. I know the rules, says the flutist, but I'll only tell you the second. Don't give names to the nameless. Okay. I have that somewhere in here, the rules. Here we go. Rule two, don't give... Oh my god. Give names to the nameless. Shall we begin? The reformer rings a bronze bell. Prisoners gather like fireflies. The cautionary tale thing, that increases my rapport with the unredeemed. No, not the unredeemed. Reformer. New total, six. I need eight to be able to press them for information on the other chaplains. Can I go back with the same guide? Yes, I can. Good. All right, so we can get it to eight and ask him about the other chaplains. Anything to do with the flutist now that we've asked them the rules? No. Wait. Oh, no. I 
can't do the thing. I, you can go down with the guides, but I can't speak to the prisoners again. Oh, I just wasted my chance. Shit. Oh, we have a testing of the second rule, just like we had a testing of the first rule. The gallant reformer strides before you, coat flapping, up narrow stairs over precarious bridges beneath crumbling bartisans. The architecture seems to have changed since you last walked here, but is as jumbled and oppressive as ever. You pass a squalling thing clinging to the wall. It lacks structure or substance except its dark, uh, stark eyes. What was my name, it mules? I'm supposed to not name it. Oh, but I'm also supposed to not look back. So I should just ignore it and move on. It looks beyond help. The thing's whimpers become a long, reedy screech. It's soon out of earshot. A formless thing. God, how sad. What a sad spirit. All the way back in the reach at the Elenus Nature Reserve, let's prepare for the Vagabond's right. The Vagabond has acquired an enormous knapsack and has packed an equally enormous amount of glassware into it. He clinks when he walks. The ritual will not be easy, he warns you. It will hurt us. It will change us. The two who leave this forest will not be the two who entered. I'm going to interpret that as my hearts are going to go even lower. <laughs> Mm, what do I need? Some supplies, vision of the heavens, and a sack of verdant seeds. I think we can just buy those here. Let's go. Do you have what we need? The vagabond stares at you. The nods. Yes, you're ready. You hike until you reach a ring of sharp stones. The vagabond builds a fire and spreads leaves over the flames. Its smoke is intoxicating. He presses a thimble of something oozing and red into your palm. It tastes sweetly foul. Red honey? Squatted over a cauldron, he begins simmering a stew of chopped toadstools and slimy carcasses. When you next look down, your arms are gnarled tree branches. They sprout glistening fruit. The vagabond plucks one and adds it to his mixture. You blink. The sky changes color. It smolders red. The vagabond has drawn symbols in the soil. How much time has passed? You try to stand, but you're rooted to the ground. You strain to speak, but your mouth is sealed by bark. You would claw your lips free, but your arms are twisted branches. The vagabond sets out two cups, one for you, one for him, and pours a seething mixture from a cauldron into both. He pauses, coughs, pushes his fingers into his mouth, and pulls from his throat the final ingredient. A calcified, knobbly seed. When added to your cup, it hisses. The vagabond sits cross-legged, closes his eyes, and sings. The surrounding trees sursurate in harmony. Okay, this is a bit odd, huh? Pulse from his throat the final ingredient, a calcified, knobbly seed. Could that be the well seed? Is that what they... It, was that their part of the bargain? They had to take the well seed and never bring it back there, maybe? I can switch the cups, drink from my assigned cup, or pour both cups away and replace the contents. Oh god, what do I do? It's not like I know they're trying to poison me or something. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 
I, if that is the well seed, maybe I want it. That could be a weapon against the suns, right? I'm going to drink from my assigned cup. If you close your eyes, the vagabond's song fills your skull like honey in a bowl, and you have no need to think. The vagabond's song reaches a pitch you cannot hear. His eyes are closed in rapture. Then his eyes snap open. In one swift gulp, he drinks from his cup and commands you to drink from yours. You do so. With that, the ritual is concluded. The birds resume their song. When do they fall silent? The vagabond stands and begins grimly packing away his paraphernalia. You drink from your own cup and completed the vagabond's ritual. Are you ready? You've performed his ritual. He should be ready to seek out his sister and confront her about quivers and the other missing skylarks. The vagabond beams at you, his eyes twinkling. Yes, I'm ready, he says. Thank you for everything. This will make a fine story when it's over. Coming up on Old Tom's Well. Descend. Take a sample of the black ice. <laughs> Always gotta get those samples. Amiable Vagabond, journey to the well's edge with old Tom. The lank minister is waiting for you, surrounded by a threadbare gaggle of her parishioners. The well winds whip at your garments. The Vagabond's beard and coat flap wildly as he strides towards his pale, gaunt sister. Greetings, brother says the lank minister with unconcealed contempt. Sister, booms the vagabond with an exaggerated bow. Aren't you going to thank me? I've brought your master another gift. Ask the lank minister what happened to Quivers. The young skylark was lured here by promises of paradise hidden in secret code. What did she do to him? The minister's face is stone. She does not reply. The vagabond answers for her. Quivers went in the well, dear comrade, he says, with a twinkle in his eye, as did dozens before him. I made a pact, you see, with the bitter old thing that lingers here. It granted me riches. I pledged it my life. He smiles, delighted by his own cleverness. But I offered some sinister folk a lot of money, and they helped me ferret out a ritual that would create a scapegoat. Ever since, I've been paying my debt with the lives of the less interesting. Paying my debt with the lives of the less interesting. So you've been sacrificing other people instead of yourself. Okay, I shouldn't have drank that. I should not have drank that cup. <laughs> Old Tom grips your shoulder and marches you to the well's edge. Fathomless dark and darkness hungers below. The lank minister and her followers have dropped in supplication, their faces pressed into the coal black ice. Here's another one, mutters Old Tom, staring down intently. Their soul is bound to mine. You follow his gaze, and for a moment, you can see almost to the well's depths, a glisten of fetid gold, a cluster of pale, grasping trees. Oh, I see. That's the ritual that allows them to get around it. They bind my soul to theirs. That way, sacrificing them is sort of like sacrificing themselves, and that, that uh, keeps the agreement struggle against the well winds. The winds howl, they hunger, but the vagabond doesn't relinquish his grip. He seems reluctant to let go. Well, damn me, says old Tom wearily, hauling you back from the edge. I can't do it. 
After all these years, I finally can't do it. The minister raises an eyebrow. Does this mean you plan to finally pay the well it's due, Tom? More, more time, old Tom begs. I can find another scapegoat, one who matters to me less. I made a mistake with this one, but I can find another. Just a few more weeks, please. It's all I ask. The terms of the bargain were clear, Tom. The Link Minister's smile is cruel and cold as the well itself. You've had time enough already. No. The whirlwind snatches legs from under him and the vagabond skids towards the well. He tries to cling to the ground but his fingers snap like brittle twigs. Ooh, Jesus. Decide the vagabond's fate. Pull the vagabond back from the brink or let the vagabond fall to his doom. Fuck you, old Tom. You're a monster. Let the Vagabond fall to his doom. He won't be able to cling for much longer. The ice cracks. The winds gnaw. Old Tom plummets into the dark, leaving a cluster of frostbitten fingertips behind. Ew. It is done, says the Link Minister with immense satisfaction, peering over the well's edge. The Vagabond finally paid his debt. They've killed dozens of people. The only problem with me is that they liked me too much. Doesn't make them a good person. Don't suppose I can speak with the sister? Uh, yeah, actually, speak to the Lank Minister. Once her dress was elaborate and fair, now the hems are frayed. Much of the lace has stiffened with frost and snapped off. Her hair is tied in a greasy bun. Well? Ask her about the amiable vagabond. Wait, what? I think... Hmm. <clears throat> I think this is a dialogue option intended for before all of this, not... not this far in the quest. Ratbite told you that some people called him Old Tom. What connection does he have to the well? Hmm. He made a pact with the powers that linger here. In return, he agreed to cast himself into the well after a year, but he found a loophole. Every year he befriends a wanderer he thinks is similar to him in some way. He binds them to him in a ritual and then throws them into the well in his stead. You're probably his next victim. Ah, so this is where I would have gotten the hint that would have made me realize I should uh, change the cups and all that stuff. Obviously, too late for that, but didn't matter either way. There's something funny about the fact that they added this new officer just for me to throw them down the well and kill them at the end of their quest. It's like, thank you for this offering, game developers. I will now kill them. I don't feel bad about it at all, though. They really were a monster. <laughs>